Okay. Welcome to our video series celebrating Women's History Month. My name is Samantha Jean. I am the marketing manager at MassBio, an organization dedicated to advancing the Massachusetts leadership in the life sciences. And I'm Lori Lennon, founder and CEO of Think You Better Media, an organization dedicated to elevating the profiles of women in STEM. All this month, we'll be introducing you to formidable women in STEM who are leading the way in their industry. Today, we're welcoming Zipporah Young, senior scientist at Chasma Therapeutics, Layla Deravi, assistant professor of chemistry and chemical biology at Northeastern University, co-founder and scientist and advisor at Seaspire Skincare. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Great. So I think the best way to start is I would love for both, we would love for both of you to give a little bit of an introduction about yourself, who you are, and um, what you do. And if you are so bold, please share a fun fact about yourself. So Zipporah, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, I can do that. So I am Zipporah Young. I'm a senior scientist at Chasma Therapeutics. Um, I work in the biology department, um, but I'm actually trained as a chemist. So my bachelor's degree is in chemistry from Duke University. Um, and then I worked for some time at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital um, that was in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and there I was doing radiochemistry and kind of learning more about uh, the sort of medical research and um, just research in general. And so that really piqued my interest. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go to grad school. So. Um, that I then went on to grad school at University of Michigan, and so I got my PhD in medicinal chemistry. Um, but now, as a as my career has gone on, I don't do any chemistry. I, I mostly do biology, cell biology, a lot of chemical biology. So I like thinking about molecules and how they bind to proteins and cells and engage with targets and how to make them better, and more efficient. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm now I would call myself a chemical biologist. So. Um, I really love working in this space of drug discovery. So this is um, my second job at a small company. And so we're an autophagy degrader company. And so autophagy is a process in the cell that is used to degrade damaged proteins or proteins that cause disease. And so we're trying to leverage what we know about this pathway to design new drugs that can connect this degradation pathway to things that we would want to degrade. So like oncogenic proteins that cause cancer or protein aggregates that can cause neurodegeneration. Um, and so I really love that what I do has the potential to help lots of people um, and help cure disease. And so that I think is really the best part of science for me. And I guess my fun fact is I play a lot of soccer. <laughs> um, that's sort of my, my physical outlet. So. Um, I love doing that after work. It's a great way to connect and meet other people. Um, and then in th the few moments that I do have any extra free time, I like to craft and DIY and create, use that creative side of my brain beyond science to uh, make fun things to decorate and hang around the house, so. Oh, that's really impressive. And I mean, soccer is no joke too. That is, <laughs> that is really hard. I was part of a mom's group and it was like a super casual, like, let's just kick the ball around. And I was sore for like three days after I played. <laughs> yeah. so. Getting back into it. Yeah. The first couple of days are sore, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, I love it. It's great. Yeah. So. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Layla, how about yourself? Please introduce yourself to everybody. Sure. So I'm Layla Dravi, and I'm an assistant professor of chemistry and chemical biology at Northeastern University. Um, before that, so I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to introduce my fun fact first, I guess. My fun fact is that I'm from Alabama. I was raised in Alabama, which is like, I feel like when you're in New England, you meet zero, zero people from Alabama. So I always, I always put that in for sort of a conversation starter. Uh, and it's important because I, so I, I got my undergraduate degree in chemistry at the University of Alabama, um, and I kind of was sat, sitting in the Southeast for a while, so I got my PhD in chemistry at Vanderbilt, so which is a little bit above there, and then came up to Harvard for my postdoc in biomedical engineering, um, where I was there for uh, a number of years as well. And after that, I started my own independent career, where now I'm at Northeastern, and I've been here since 2016. Um, and that Northeastern, I lead a group that's called the Biomaterials Design Group. And in this group, what in essentially the entire group does, which right now it's about 12 to 13 people, is that we're looking at 
fundamental mechanisms that regulate systems and biology for materials applications. And if that means nothing to anybody, what that means is essentially that we look at how biology works. And, and one specific example that we study all the time is color and color change in cephalopods, which are marine animals. We look at how these animals work, look at how what the small molecules and the proteins are that live in the skin as adaptive analytical sensors. And then we put them into synthetic materials and systems that are able to do the same. So we're looking for sustainable alternatives to everyday consumer product goods. Um, so whether that's something like displays, which is a direct analogy from the animal, which are these lim living camouflaging uh, units, or it's something like paints. So everyday consumer paints on walls um, that you would put. So that's that's an area which obviously every single paint has different types of pigments and small molecules and dyes that comprise all the colors that you see um, everywhere you go. And then another thing which is uh, was touched upon in my intro is applications in cosmetics. So that's also another uh, major industry which is desperately in need of new raw materials and raw materials um, in the case of the stuff that we're working on that are inspired directly by how biology works. And so I, I don't, again, know how familiar you all are with the cosmetic industry or any of these industries that I talked about, but every single one of them has sort of like an asterisk on them of safety. So whether it's uh, human safety or whether it's environmental safety, there's a lot of focus now that is being put on rethinking about the raw materials which have kind of historically been grandfathered into all of these products that we use every single day. Um, and people are now realizing that, oh, hey, wait, what we thought was safe back, you know, 40 years ago is actually not safe uh, in the terms that we consider them today. Um, and not only that, but we see a lot of buildup in the environment and long-term effects like coral reef bleaching or alterations of respiration profiles in corals, which are now starting to get a lot of attention from a lot of different major regulatory bodies. So the reason why I'm saying all this is because in 2019, no, 2020, I had a, PhD, a, PhD, a former PhD student of mine, Camille Martin, um, so she she was in my research lab at Northeastern, and she worked on a project looking at the safety profiles, the functionality of one specific raw material that we had originally identified in these marine animals, these cephalopods. And essentially, her PhD project was to validate the safety and efficacy and performance features of this raw material. In 2020, after she graduated, what happened was that we actually... Uh, I say 2020 and 2019 because we actually we formed the company in December 2019, but we actually started officially in January 2020. So it's like a little bit of a tight threshold. But anyway, so we started the company um, called Seaspire Skincare, which is based off of uh, trying to create safer sunscreens using um, materials that are inspired by biology, essentially. So using her PhD project as the platform that we now um, are trying to design safer sunscreens. And I'm talking a lot about this, but let me know. Let me know if I need to stop it. Like I'll say one more thing about sunscreens, because if you think about the global skincare market, sun sunscreens are just kind of one portion of it. And sunscreens, as it turns out, in like 2018, 2019, there was a lot of data that came out that, hey, look, actually the every daily use, everyday sunscreens that you put on your skin are actually the small molecules in them are penetrating your skin and actually causing systemic toxicities in the body at levels that are higher than what the FDA had regulated as are deemed as safe. Um, and also a lot of the stuff about the coral reef bleaching is coming out because you can imagine like you go into the ocean, you have sunscreen on, it just washes off and it kind of sits in the ocean, falls down to the ocean floor and is actually causing a lot of downstream reactions too. And so we started the company for safer sunscreens trying to meet this unmet need of um, how can we rethink these uh, active materials that are in everyday uh, skincare, sun care products. Um, that's incredible. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about sunblocks really affecting sea life. I never thought about it that way. So yeah, and or like making a correlation between um, coral bleaching and, and yeah, but I like you you think about it like um uh like if you think about it in the context of kids, um so I have two boys under four right now, and the first thing that a pediatrician says is do not put sunscreen on kids that are under two. Do not do that because the chemicals in sunscreens go into the skin and they do things to like a developing body. 
Um, and they have a specific segment of sun, sun creams or sunscreens that you can use for, for children. And it's also recommended to use in moderation too, even though we know sunscreens are good for us, but it is, uh, yeah. So there's like a lot of different things that we might not think about, but that are growing issues. Yeah. Ooh, we're so excited to dig into this a little bit more, Layla. That's really interesting. 